The next drawing we're going to do has two characters in it, and the two are Dirk and the dragon Singe. Now, Dirk is a little tiny character, and Dragon is a great big character, Singe is. So, what I'm going to do to cheat this a little bit is I'll pull Dirk into the foreground so that he stays kind of big, and push the dragon into the background. And I think, just to get this thing to work, I'm going to um, sketch out how I can do this. This dragon is sort of looking at Dirk like that. And I can bring all the tail up around like this. And maybe the legs of the dragon like that. So I think that's going to work. So the dragon, uh, what I just told you, I think is really relevant here. What's the dragon doing? Is he excited? Is he angry? Does he want to get dirt? All of that becomes really relevant. So I, I get a dragon that's going to be kind of that big. So Dirk, if I turn him around and put our back to us, we're not going to see him too much. But what I could do is have him, he's just made a swing at the dragon, and he's really in the foreground up here. So I'll put his head there, maybe arms like this. There's his sword. And um, so he... I want, to, I want to do it in action, because somehow the action always looks better rather than just standing there. And we'll say he has just swung the sword like that, but the dragon had stepped back and it missed. So that, that gives me an idea of what the picture's going to look like. Um, right now, I've got this down in this corner, so it looks like we're going to probably have to take the little seal and put it over in this corner. But I think it'll work. So let's get, um, let's get this singed dragon to work for us. Really important. I'm going to just slightly detail again. So I know what I'm, what I'm drawing here. Um, the eyes will be somewhere in there. The hard part about this dragon a lot of times is these big rims that are on his tummy. But once I kind of get the idea, then I, I can work with a little more confidence. Uh, I'm going to say the dragon is really, really angry or really fierce because it it's going to make a better drawing which means his hands are going to take on kind of a stiff look. Shoulders. Shoulders up here. That's going to work great. Then I'll put all the spines and all the decoration on just a little bit later. Let's see what Dirk's going to look like. Um, I think he's going to be looking back towards the dragon, so I've got the eye line right there, and I'm going to put his eyes looking up at the guy. So it's sort of like that. Here would be his helmet. There's the dirt nose. And the dirt frown. That works. And his shoulders. It's really hard with, uh, with human characters. You have to get the anatomy just right. Or anyone looking at it says, eh, it doesn't look right. And they'll spot it immediately. Even if they're not an artist, they'll spot it. So it'll be something like this. So far, I'm fairly confident. I'm going to be careful of the little skirt, not to put it on too soon, because he's in motion. When a character is in motion, all the all the, what we call the secondary action things, which would be things like cloth or hair or tails or anything like that. All of those things move according to what the character is doing. So I'm not going to put this on him yet. I'll just wait and I'll know just what to do later on, but right now I don't know. Okay, so that gives me an idea how Jerk is going to look. So let's start detailing our dragon and see if we can't get this guy looking really terrific. Go up here, I'm going to have him, the eyes and the mouth are always really important. There's a knob on top of his head, and the brows are always a little darker than anything else. The cheeks of the dragon tell you, you know, what he's, what he's doing, so I think the dragon has one of those mean kind of smiles on his face. And the big nostrils, which you can see. I 
when we were first learning how to, to draw this dragon, everybody had a lot of fun with it because we <laughs> we had a clue. No one knows what a dragon really looks like, you know, unless you look at the Komodo dragons. And, and you just don't know, so you have to make something up. So we stuck right on the bottom of his chin these two great big warts with these little growths that come out of them. And we went up to the top of his head on the knot on top of his head and did the same thing so that he has these appendages that come out of his head. And it made him really interesting. Then we thought, well, why not put sort of like out of the same point right here, we're going to put these big fan-like things on his cheeks, which are like fins. And he suddenly got uh, very interesting. And what, what we use these for is whenever he looked like he was held a burst of adrenaline, these things would open up and these would straighten out so that it gave us uh, little appendages that gave him expression. We thought we were so clever in those days. Now I'm giving the regular dragon tongue right now rather than having just spit the fire. So now let's let's head into the um, the back of the dragon. He has all these really great looking spines on his back, which drive animators crazy. But they're all so part of his charm. If you go up here like this. You have to start putting all these little lines. Now these things tell you what the perspective of the dragon is. Since it looks like we're kind of upshot, I like to kind of change the, the direction and make them go up. So that we looks like we're looking up underneath him, which I think helps. Now he's also a very strong guy, so you want to give him, you know, all the musculature that he needs to be a dragon. And also a little detail that I'm going to get more into later on is he has all these little warts all over him. So, there we go. Let's draw his chest. And on the chest, I'm going to continue these. So far, I'm liking it. I think it's going to be good. Um, right then, here again, here's some of these little warts that get all over his skin. I don't know what those are. It just makes him look a little bit kind of like an animal, so we do that. And I even forgotten who came up with that idea. But it was a combination of a lot of people working together. See, now I've kind of got a straight over here with these curves. Those are playing against each other. And against the straight, here's another curve. But I don't want to parallel anything because parallel lines usually are, are boring things. And here we go. Let's get into the legs. Again, since he is a, uh, he's angry right now, I think what we want to do is we want to get all of the, the feet, the toes, the hands, the fingers, and all that to be very stiff looking so that he's got them extended. And the claws on the end of them, that only, it's going to make it look really, really good. All right. And right here. We'll do this, 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 and then get this other leg. And he has big fleshy legs, so don't be afraid if you're trying to draw this guy to make them kind of big and flat and fleshy, but also a real fleshy knee. There we go. And then on the spines, we won't see all the spines on the back of him. You'll see some over on this side. And then they pick up once again when you see the top of his tail. And they're not all the way down. I've chosen to put them partially down and then there's a little smooth part where maybe some have fallen off and then there's a few more and then there's a few more. And I'm using this tail to draw attention to Dirk who's out here in the open. So this is going like this. It's leading you right to look at Dirk. There's the bottom of his tail, a few more spines, not too many. It's what you leave out sometimes that makes it look good. Okay, let's do the other hand up here. This is claws. It's almost a human looking hand, but, uh, but not.
This is foreshortened. So there's the bicep. Here would be the elbow down here. And then we decorate it with the few little warts. That does that. All right, let's finish off dirt for us. And we're almost there. There we go. Turk is actually really fun to draw. And once you get the hang of him, um, I always enjoy doing this. Sometimes I can't exactly talk why I'm doing some of the things, but it's sort of an intuitive process after a while. So you get to know when the line is in the right place or it's not. Don't be afraid to use your eraser because that's why we make mistakes. You just admit them, erase it, and go on. Um, all right. Now, Dirk, you have to think through this. You know, how is he grasping? Here's his hand. His, uh, his thumb goes around the other side. This other hand is upside down, and this is the thumb here. All right, and... So I'm liking that. Let's draw the hilt of the sword. This will tell us kind of how the sword angle is. There's the, the knob on the end of the hilt of the sword. Now we have to draw the sword itself. And there we are. Now I'm ready to kind of put clothes on this guy. And I know that... I'm going to let that fly up there because he's moving forward, so this trail's behind like a secondary action. There's his other leg. If it looks like at any time you don't like the way you've drawn this, just erase. And uh, as long as you're drawing with a fairly soft pencil, you're going to have a problem because you haven't grooved the paper. He has big, big legs down to him, almost no ankles at all. And no one knows why he has no ankles. We're just accepted. So there's your dirk. Now the last thing to stick in, of course, is these lines, speed lines, that indicate the swing that he just took. And a little bit of a shadow will put him on the ground. And there you have Dirk and Singe. Okie doke.